Cloud computing holds tremendous promise for technology. I want to talk for a minute about the risks inherent in giving over too much to clouds and on-demand computing, and how this represents another war on general purpose computing. Once upon a time, computers did everything. They didn't do it very fast, but they did everything. There were no limits on what they could do. Nobody thought computers would be as ubiquitous as they are today. Back then, they were dry and boring. They ate punched cards and tape reels, and they spat out stuff like tax rates, actuarial tables, and price lists. In the early days of computing, we could do whatever we wanted. We always had root. We were bu weren't busy thinking about what computers couldn't or shouldn't do yet. We didn't build things like ENIAC with restrictions. It was the computers that couldn't. Computer power was precious, even priceless, so we didn't really test their boundaries. Bottom line is we never believed computers would be cool. Consider this story about a sound effect. When Apple Computer was young, it was sued by Apple Records for trademark violation. Apple ultimately agreed to a settlement that prohibited them from getting into the music industry because back then, a computer was hardly a musical instrument, right? Well, fast forward a little while, here's an Akai workstation designed for an iPad. And if you go look in your Mac preferences, you'll find there's a sound effect called Sosumi. Legend has it this was a snubbing of Apple Records by Apple. After all, today a computer isn't a computer. It's a publisher, and a musical instrument, and movies, and even factories. Computers can do anything with content. This includes things like making copies, distributing those copies, and giving other people the tools to copy and distribute. And this is a problem, especially for the people who own all that content. They don't like the fact that a general purpose computer can do whatever it wants with their content. The computer has become the latest round in a centuries old fight between content creators who make money from scarcity and consumers who want it cheap and now. We've seen this kind of fight before. With the broad distribution of cheap books, Cardinal John Henry Newman objected that they made learning easy so we wouldn't know the true value of knowledge, claiming that books were bad because what the steam engine does with matter, the printing press is to do with the mind. A few years later, MPAA President Jack Valenti claimed that VCRs were to the American film producer and the American public what the Boston Strangler was to the woman home alone. Despite this, the MPAA's members make tons of money off DVDs and VCRs every year. But this fight is different because it's digital. It's made from bits, and bits are, well, frictionless. A copy of a copy is as good as the original and nearly free, which means copying just went nuclear. This has kicked off a huge arms race. Things like dongles protect copying, funny instruction manuals, floppy disks with physical flaws, encryption, tools like Flash and Silverlight. But every time there's a way of trying to stop people from copying it, hackers overcome the problem. And they do this because they have root. They can get underneath the restrictions to the general purpose computer hidden inside. The hackers have another advantage. The copy they make is better because they fix the intentional crippling that the content owners have put in place. That means there's no dongle, no silly manual tricks, no annoying FBI warning that only the legitimate users have to sit through. Indeed, the only people being punished are legitimate users. DRM made legitimate buyers angry and made the cracked copies better than the originals, and this round went to the hackers. Eventually, reasonably priced alternatives emerged, and the free market had spoken. Well, I think it's time for another round. Today's internet has thrived because of a layered model where we can work on any of the layers in the technology between us and the content. For example, you can copy and paste the text from a website because the operating system, the browser, and the site you're visiting are all separate things and because the protocols are open. You can save an image and edit it yourself because GIF, JPEG, and PNG don't have opinions about how they can be used. And that's given the content owners a lot more to worry about. So those owners are now turning to legislation. Things like SOPA and PIPA are examples of what happens when companies that are threatened by the future try to roll back the clock. Canada has its own, possibly worse legislation that could make some digital devices flat out illegal. In a nutshell, SOPA and PIPA are horribly malformed pieces of law that try to prop up old business models and give the US government heavy-handed big brotherish powers. So far, everything I've talked about has been paraphrasing a brilliant article by Cory Doctorow. It's densely written, somewhat technical, and it must read. Something else, however, is afoot. Sure, copy protection, encryption, SOPA, and other attempts to limit what we consume and how we consume it are all skirmishes in a war on general purpose computing, our fundamental ability to use a computer the way we want to. But today, content creators have a new ally in their war on that general purpose computer. It's us. In other words, it's our laziness. We want our computing to be easy and uncomplicated. 
We want specialized computers we can watch TV on and play games on and make phone calls on and drive on. And every time we find a general purpose computer that's been simplified, it's somehow been crippled. You could get root on a speak and spell. Here's root on the Raspberry Pi for about 25 bucks. But if you try and get root on a game console, it'll probably brick itself. And this is really scary because today, the line between content and software and the devices it runs on is almost indistinguishable. Today, a book is an application. And once this happens, the content has opinions about how it can be used, like where it can be played from. Sure, locking things down is good. Simple, rootless lockdown computers are easier because naive users can't accidentally break them. Locks make things simple, so more of them, us can use more of them in more ways. This has meant a Cambrian explosion of computing devices everywhere in our lives. More supportable, used by a wider range of people, even curious eight-year-old passengers on airplanes. As ubiquity grows, however, utility shrinks. The less things can do, the more people can use it, and vice versa. And this means, for example, that I can watch a movie on my iPad anywhere I want, but I can't watch that movie on anything I want. In fact, tools that allowed us to watch what we wanted were removed from the App Store because they contravened Apple's terms of use. Today we share at the pleasure of the application. Consider a story I want to share on my iPad. If I'm using the Facebook app, I have to open up the application in Safari, get the URL from there or by copying the URL, and then share it by email because Facebook has decided I shouldn't be allowed to share directly by email. I don't get any more copy and paste unless the app says so. I can't get inside my iPad because I can't get root. And today that's content, but there are some scary thoughts about tomorrow in here too. What happens when I have a hearing aid, a future where a company can control maybe pumping ads in and I can't do anything about it? Or worse, what happens when I have a device and there are restrictions on what I can print with it? Let's say there's some sex toy the government decides is inappropriate for me to print, and as a result it blocks that thing in my country. And this might seem like science fiction, but consider that if you try and scan a uh, currency into Photoshop today, you'll find that it's already built in. I believe general purpose computing should be a fundamental right, and that freedom of root increasingly is freedom of speech. And we should probably wake up to these changes, because there's another round in the fight, and it's one we're losing already. It's not only consumer devices that are eroding our right to, cloud, to open computing. It's cloud computing as well. We want cloud computing that just works, and as a result, we give up root very, very easily. This is a slippery slope where computers take over and we lose control, not because those computers are all sentient and matrix, but because it's so easy to have those computers do things for us. The future isn't owned by Terminators. It's owned by WALL-E. If we're not careful, we'll become captives to our own laziness. And by the way, if this presentation gets uploaded somewhere, SOPA says it can be taken down without due process because of those pictures. In the next year, we'll move rapidly up the stack to platforms and services. As I've said before, we really don't want to see how the sausage is made. We don't want to look at the machines underneath our cloud computing because they get in the way of efficiency, delivery, and scalability. But all of these things that clouds promise, all this turnkey, it just works, mobile-ready, compliant stuff comes at a price. Every time you can't get root or can't get your metadata, you step away from general purpose computing. Sure, it's nice not to know how the sausage is made, but the downside of not knowing how the sausage is made is no new sausages. It's a sausage monopoly. It's having no say in the content of what goes into your sausages. Giving up complexity means giving up options. And this is a slippery slope towards a world where we run on clouds of loving grace. I believe that all of us should defend our right to root. We should defend our right to schema, our right to export our data, our right to understand all the content and get access to it and do with it as we want, our right to openness, our right to meddle. This is one of the biggest and most subtly insidious threats to personal freedom that society faces today. It leads to an Orwellian future that quickly ends the Cambrian explosion of innovation and connectedness we're currently in. The future doesn't need us to be able to poke around in the stack. But if we want a future, we need to demand it anyway. We shouldn't just demand freedom of speech, we should demand freedom of computing. Because freedom of computing is a human right, and this really is a war. I invite you to join the fight for general purpose computing. Thanks.